Your name? Is it the number of letters in your name? No. Well, that could be one number that you might look at. But what you want to look at is, it starts, it's very simple. We've made it very simple in the West. You take the letters of the alphabet. A is the number one. B is the number two. C is oh, three. Oh, don't ask okay. me to do this. It's like the 15th <laughs> letter. Which one is it? You go A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Right, but 15 is a six. It's a sixth letter. It's not 15. Is there any, is the number one through nine or zero through nine? You can't come up with a zero unless, let's say, you were born... No, you couldn't. If you were born in 1900, that's 10, which is a what? A one. It always reduces to one through nine. One uh, through nine. Okay, you but, see, you answered one of my questions. Right, but the, the, the zero is a... Is a um, Actually, it was sort of interesting because the Mayans had uh, used the zero in their mathematical uh, calculations long before it was known in the West. W you know, we've discovered that they had an understanding of this. Uh, and basically, I think the Arabs, uh, Islam, was the next, uh, chronologically, the next group of people that started to use the, the naught. Um, anyway, we don't use it, we don't have in numerology uh, uh, a value that we put on it when we deal with the, the particular individual. There is a value to the naught or the zero, um, but it, it's, it's bigger than any one particular person because the, the naught, the circle, the zero is really infinite. So it, you can't talk about it in terms of an individual. You might say almost that it's a God number. But isn't zero also zero, nil, not a nilch? Right. I mean, it's, it's so how's that infinity? Well, because infinity is made up of both. It's made up of naught and plus. You know? <laughs> oh my God. We're having a pretty serious philosophical discussion I here. I know we are. <laughs> uh, by the way, Mary Shaw will take your calls on astrology at 241-1310. Good time to get in. I'm, I'm just still very confused by this. If zero equals nothing, how can it mean everything? Well, because the idea is that, that first of all, numbers are something that uh, are very much of a mental, um, meditative kind of thing. Uh, Plato and Py Pythagoras talked about uh, other ways that we relate to the world uh, through our senses, you know, color, smell, touch, um, that these were sort of the more practical, material ways that we deal w with our experience in life. But when we deal with numbers, it's a truly spiritual thing because there is no, there is nothing concrete. It is, it's a concept, it's an idea. Numbers are not about concrete reality. Yes, you can add, you know, six apples plus one apple and get seven, but it's the apple that's the concrete reality, not the number of them. <laughs> okay. All right, I know the apple is there. Bear with me. Oh, Mike, I know. I, I mean, it's Monday morning. you got to give me a break. Now, you may have been thinking about this all weekend. Mm. I started to think about this at about 10 minutes to 9, saying, okay, she's going to be here with the numbers today. That means I have to, you know, take a look at all my, make sure I have all the, you know, everything taken care of here. And now you, what, what you're telling me is I not only have to remember my number, but I have to know all the other numbers and how I relate to it. But if the number zero is there, but you don't use the number zero, but some people did, then that's either infinity or nothing. These are things to contemplate. You know, the whole nature of numerology, astrology, it's very much like philosophy or religion. Uh, there aren't answers. It's not about answers. It's about new ways and different ways of thinking about things. Um, you know, in, in the Bible, um, and some of the great, you know, philosophical thinkers, Thomas Aquinas and um, St. Augustine and so on, you know, they weren't particularly uh, enthusiastic about astrology because astrology was something that they felt, you know, was pagan, that it was, you know, many gods and so on. But they, they did use numbers. Numbers was a very important part of their, you know, and when they talk in the Bible about, there are many different numbers that come up over and over again. Yeah. 
the nature of number. All right, that, that I do understand. We're going to get to the phones just a couple seconds away to uh, Lori, who is on line two. Uh, we're going to get to you just a couple seconds away. We'll be back with Mary Michelle. I'm so confused. I guess I know where we are. This is WVIP on a Monday morning. Back with Mary Michelle taking your calls on astrology. 241-1310 in one minute. Human resource management is a hot career path, and Mercy College can put you on the fast track to success. Consider the facts. One, experts say that HRM jobs will increase by over 32% in the next decade. Two, directors earn an average of $80,000 per year. Three, you can get your Mercy College master's degree in human resource management in just 12 months. The Mercy program teaches you just what it takes to build a fulfilling, lucrative career. After all, today's HRM is a lot more than just personnel. It's hiring employees, advising senior executives, addressing large groups, and lots more. Let Mercy College put you in the middle of it all with dynamic courses and programs like personnel law, benefits management, and international HRM. Earn your Mercy Masters at their convenient White Plains or Dobbs Ferry campuses in just a full year of full-time study, a little longer part-time, and always flexible enough to work around your schedule. Call 1-800-MERCY-NEW-YORK for details. That's 1-800-MERCY-NEW-YORK York to get going on your career in human resource management. All right, 25 past the hour. We have one open line at 241-1310. Let's get to the phones. Good morning. Lori is calling from Yorktown. Date of birth is August 7th, 1959. You're on with Mary Michelle. Good morning. Good morning, Lori. How are you? I'm fine, Mary. I had called you on Friday, and you had said to call back. Okay, great. I'm glad you're calling. Um, but you might have to remind me, was there something in particular that we were talking about? Uh, well, you had told me that I was very analytical, which I am more than I'd like to admit, and uh, that the year looks secure, but I wanted to ask you a further question about my relationship with my children and my husband, things like that. Okay. So we're going to come to the relationship part strongly today. Sun in Leo, Moon in Virgo, Mercury in Leo, Venus in Virgo, Mars in Virgo. Um, Venus and Mars and Virgo. Okay, Venus and Mars are the two planets that when we talk about relationship issues um, that we want to look at in a chart. So with the sun, with uh, the moon, Venus and Mercury and Mars, but all in the sign of Virgo, um, the emphasis is, you know, there's a very strong uh, tendency here to the, these Virgo characteristics. Leo, of course, um, you know, will, will fight that sometimes because they'd rather have the, the fun and the dash and the party and so on. But the uh, Virgo thing is very important, and certainly in your relationship, it's something that's very important. Um, you offer to your husband a certain kind of security in your ability to deal with very mundane things, you know, uh, things around the house. Uh, I don't know if you're a good cook or if you're very tidy or whatever, but there's something about that to him that is very, very important. Um, of course, this doesn't always translate as a romantic idea, but it can. You know, sometimes romance can be about the, the little thoughtful, caring things. So there, there must be some way in which you manifest that with him that, that he likes a lot. Um, certainly, you know, this year uh, with this, this uh, transit of Jupiter, as I've been talking about in Capricorn, it's, it's, it's enhancing those abilities of yours to think in a very thought, thoughtful, caring way. You're able to deal with details and come up with ideas. And um, Does your husband like sports? Yes. So, you know, what you might do is, is uh, do you like sports? I'm not crazy over it. No, I know. I'm not either. But anyway, what you might do is, you know, put uh, the sports in a romantic setting so that you're making both of you happy. You know, buy a bunch of candles, put them around the TV set, um, you know, have flowers around so that when the when the sports thing is on, the, the sports event or whatever, um, you can sort of set the mood for the commercials. Uh, does that ring a bell? Yeah. Okay. Is there anything in particular that's wrong that's, um... No, it's just, um... Uh... He's, it just makes me nervous that he talks about maybe changing jobs and you know, uh, things like that. I don't know. I don't know if... Am I allowed to give his birth date to you? For the time? Uh, well, give it to me, but you may have to call again. Okay. What, what is it? Seven, fourteen, fifty-five. Okay, well, 
You know, he, he's a cancer, you know, and you, you know the general characteristics of cancer. They're very um, homebody oriented and so on. So I, I would think the odds are that, you know, even though he might sort of make you think sometimes that he's going to disrupt things and get you to move and so on, it probably won't happen because he likes security probably more than you do. Is that helpful? Yeah. Okay, well, thank okay. you for calling. Thanks Actually, for calling. us Cancerians are five foot two with eyes of blue, <laughs> and we're coochie coochie.